from urging more flexible work arrangements to greater protection for victims of domestic violence to allowing elective egg freezing. These were part of a long-anticipated white paper on Singapore women's development with the goal of achieving equality between men and women. The 115-page paper was submitted to Parliament yesterday and follows over a year of discussions. It sets out five main areas of focus, equal opportunities in the workplace, recognition and support for caregivers, protection against violence and harm, other support measures for women, including single mothers and divorcees, and mindset shifts. We'll hone in on a few points, like egg freezing. Joining me to discuss that is Ms. Sun Xieling, Minister of State for Social and Family Development. Minister of State for Manpower, Ms. Gan Xiao Huang is here as well to talk about Flexible Work Arrangements, or FWAs for short. So, MOS Gan, let's go to you first. A new set of FWA guidelines will be introduced by 2024, which will require employers to consider these requests from employees fairly and properly. More companies are adopting FWAs. Do tell us though, how would FWAs benefit men and women? Thanks, Oliver. This is a great question. Uh, flexible work arrangements actually will benefit all workers, both women and men. Especially for women, many of whom are still the primary caregivers at home, flexible work arrangements mm. will allow them to be able to better manage the work as well as personal life and family commitments and uh, flexible arrangements which are going to be available to both women and men uh, equally, hopefully will also allow both to be able to share the caregiving responsibilities uh, um, better. Well, for the employers, actually flexible work arrangements also offer opportunities because uh, they can then tap on a larger pool of talent, uh, some of whom you know, might be uh, uh, the elderly or uh, caregivers you know, who previously had to stop work um, you know, or had to take a, a slower pace at work because of lack of flexible work arrangements. Um, I think all in all, we are hoping that with promotion of flexible work arrangements, it will be a win-win for both the employees as well as the employers. Definitely. So something else that was proposed in the white paper, the government will also enshrine standards on fair employment practices in law. Uh, MOS Gan, what are the motivations for legislating the three landing points to ensure workplace fairness? Well, actually, last year, we already announced our intent to enshrine the tripartite guidelines on fair employment practices in law. This is to send our strongest signal on you know, our zero tolerance on discrimination and harassment at the workplace. Now, uh, through the year-long series of the conversations on uh, Singapore women's development, as well as MOM's uh, surveys, we find that discrimination continues to be a problem and that there is a need for us to stem it. So the committee on uh, workplace fairness is looking into um, legislating the requirement for companies to put in place formal processes uh, to deal with grievances encountered by the employees um, secondly, also to protect the identity of people who report on workplace discrimination. And thirdly, to prohibit retaliation against those who report on discrimination. Well, actually, we are very much motivated by what we hear on the ground and also the feedback from some employees who themselves experience discrimination but do not step forward to report because of fear of retaliation, loss of jobs for themselves or for their fellow colleagues. So the Tripartite Committee on Workplace Fairness will be consulting the Tripartite partners as well as other stakeholders um, in the months ahead. And what we want to do is make sure that while we provide better assurance and protection to workers, we uh, do not, you know, as a result, uh, create a litigious type of workplace culture. Well, let's move on to egg freezing. In a symbolic move, women between 21 and 35 years old, whether single or married, will be allowed to freeze their eggs for non-medical reasons. But only legally married couples can use their frozen eggs to try for a baby through IVF. With more is MOS Sun Xieling. MOS Sun, we have a broad idea of why there is a call for women to be given the option to freeze their eggs to preserve fertility, essentially. For instance, if this woman, if a woman wishes to conceive at a later, at an older age, I should say. So apart from that, uh, MOS soon, what are the other reasons for supporting elective egg freezing? 
The government has always promoted marriage and parenthood aspirations amongst Singaporeans. Through the conversations we've had in the past year, we came to recognise that there are a group of women who were concerned that they were not able to find a suitable life partner when they were younger, but they mm. still wish to preserve their fertility. So the government took a look at uh, the various options and decided that there was no um, reason to restrict elective egg freezing uh, for women because it is medically viable. We had also consulted the National Medical Ethics Committee as well as assisted reproduction practitioners. Mm. MOS, is there a consultation process, so to speak, when a woman decides to freeze her eggs? The white paper mentions sufficient safeguards to ensure they make an informed choice. What is the government looking out for here? It is important that the women who are considering elective egg freezing knows what are the pros and the cons to undergoing elective egg freezing. For example, it is an invasive medical procedure. Also, the success rates of successfully conceiving a child using a frozen egg is not high. Medical evidence shows that it is between 2 to 12%. It is also difficult for um, older women to take care of children as it might be exhausting. So one may not want to postpone parenthood to two elderly, senior and age. Also, one also needs to be concerned about storage uh, as well as the medical costs of elective egg freezing. So we think it is important that when a woman considers elective egg pre uh, freezing, that they first undergo pre-procedure counselling, which will take into account all the above that I mentioned. Mm, very important indeed. Well, MOS are only legally married couples can use their frozen eggs for procreation. Why not make this option available for unmarried women as well? We have always promoted parenthood within marriage. This has been a consistent government policy. Our current uh, IVF, as well as our assisted reproduction conditions and criteria, all adhere to the same principle, that of uh, parenthood within marriage. Uh, therefore, even when we allow elective egg freezing, we're still making this option, providing women the choice uh, to freeze their eggs when they are single. They do not have to be married when they are considering it. But in the actual conception of having the egg developed to becoming a baby, only legally married couples are allowed to do so. Well, thank you to both for coming on The Big Story, Minister of State for Social and Family Development, Sun Chia Ling, and Minister of State for Manpower, Gan Xiao Huang.